Okay, we are live. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It is Hello. Laura and Danny here with Double Booked Co. It is the end of March. I cannot believe it no. is the end of March. And we are talking about our book of the month, which is The Witch of Blackbird Pond, mm -hmm. uh, which is by Elizabeth George Spear. Um, considered a middle grade read, um, which is great for us here in middle grade March. If anyone was reading any of um, the books for the prompts, that's great. I hope this one helped you with that. Um, but yeah, we always try to pick books that kind of go along with like the month's like, readathon, um, yeah. but it doesn't always fit in. So I'm, I'm glad that this one um, did help if if it did for most of you out there. Mm -hmm. um, but in the comments, let us know um, if you're here, say hello. Um, and then we'll kind of get into everything in a moment. Uh, we'll first um, let you all know in case you haven't been following the poll. Um, but for next month, um, the read for April um, was decided by everyone to be the upstairs and downstairs my life in service as a lady's maid by hilda newman um now we were finding as a group i noticed in the voxer discussion that it had two different names what are the what are the two names people can see this is the new one this is the one that's currently listed on like kindle unlimited so it's for free if you have ku right now um they retitled it the original title is diamonds at dinner my life and services a lady's maid. So they just changed that first part for, I don't know, name a reason. And now it's called Upstairs and Downstairs. So the original title is Diamonds at Dinner. The new one is Upstairs and Downstairs. But Hilda Newman is still the author. A guy helped her write it. I don't remember who that is. It's almost yeah, Tate. Listed. Tim Tate, I think. Yeah, yeah Tim Tate. It was mm -hmm. something with like double letters. But yeah. Um, so yeah, it's still Hilda Newman. The same book. If you see either title, it's the same book. Yeah. And I'll do a quick um, screen share here so you can see uh, what it looks like. On Goodreads, it is uh, titled as that upstairs, downstairs, yeah. upstairs and downstairs. And then that oh, yeah. is the, um, this is what the uh, current cover looks like. I know there's a couple of different, obviously there's always different covers, but yeah. this is the one that's showing on Goodreads if you're looking for that. Mm -hmm. um, I myself only have found um, it on Audible. Uh, so like my library doesn't have it on Hoopla. I didn't find it on Libby. Um, so the only place I found it without um, like ordering it off of uh, online or anything was on Audible. So that's what I will actually be listening to it. Mm -hmm. I have to find my copy still. I'm determined to find it. If I've owned it for like eight years, I'd like to actually read the copy. However, <laughs> if I can't find it for some mysterious reason, I'll be reading the digital version just because I have KU. Hi, Andy. Hi, Hi. Jenna. Hey, cool gamer. Nice Hello. to see everyone. Um, yes. So that will be April's read. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that'll be starting in April. Um, and you'll notice we have the reading sprints on April 9th. Now, typically, if you've followed us for a while, you know that we usually do the first Tuesday of every month. But I, personally, I'm get, I was getting a little tired of like the double up. So we were like two weeks in a row, we'd have a live discussion and then immediately the next week would be um, the new products and uh, the reading sprints. And then we'd have a couple weeks off and then it would, again, it would be live discussion and then uh, the next week. So because April is such a nice, like full month, um, we're going to go ahead and push it one week down and we're going to do the uh, new products and the reading sprints on Tuesday, April 9th. Um, so just so you're aware um, we won't be next week, which is the second. We'll be the next, the week after that, which is the ninth. So hope that doesn't mess with anybody's schedule up, but feel free to begin reading it whenever you want. Yep. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Now, as you all know, we do um, ourselves, Laura and I pick our birthday months. We pick the reading in those months mm -hmm. and May 
is uh, Laura's birthday month. So since we're saying April's book, we're just going to go ahead and let you guys know what May's book is as well. So Laura, if you'd like to go ahead and let everyone know. Yeah. Okay. So I tried to pick a book that was a standalone and unless I miss something in my Googling, this is a standalone. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> But it's sort of science fiction, fantasy, magical realism, something like that. And it's um, about books and a little girl finding her own. Um, it's diary entries, so a little epistolary-ish. Um, and I wanted to read this for quite a long time. I figured, screw it, we're doing it. So we're going to read Among Others by Joe Walton. Here's the cover that I have. There you go. That's the cover. Um, so... I hope everybody likes it. I know it's pretty popular and a lot of people probably have read this before. I certainly have not. Um, my copy is like just about 300 pages exactly. So shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully it will be an easy read. I think there's also some talk about music in here too from what I remember. But yeah, we're going to read Among Others in May. And I hope if you've read it, you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll reiterate that yeah. um, in our next couple of things. So there won't be a poll for May. We'll just um, have that book. Um, and then uh, when the time comes, we'll do our poll for June. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our discussion going of uh, tonight's read, which again is The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear. This is a middle grade book and it did win the Newbery, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um and I typically don't read a lot of like the beginning, like random about author or author's note or anything that's like in the book other than the actual book. But in this book, I read it um, on my e-reader because I had it through Libby and it had an introduction and I actually did read it and I don't know why I decided to, but I think I just was like, I don't know, in the motions and I was just reading whatever was on the page. And it was a very interesting um, introduction by, was it Karen Cushman? Hmm. Is that the name? She, obviously, she's an author. And I really enjoyed it because she gave her impression of the book when she read it as a young adult, um, which I thought was really interesting. And she explained how she grew up in the um, 70s the McCarthy era and how this book really impacted her vision of what that was like growing up in that, you know, with yeah. communism and the cold war and all that. So it was really interesting and I'm glad I read it. Um, did anybody else have that same introduction in their copy and did that impact your reading um, I kind of wanted to put that out there before we even kind of got into more discussion. If no one read it, that's fine. It's just me thinking like, oh, that was interesting. Um, but let me know in the comments. Did you have that in yours, Laura? No, I have. My copy is from the 80s. So okay. no, it doesn't have that at all. Just the book. I wish it did. Here. Um, the, eh, let me see. Yeah, Karen Cushman. Mm -hmm. I believe she, let me just look here. I can tell you in just a second. Oops. Um, so Karen Cushman is the author of like, it's called um, Catherine called Birdie. So it looks like. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So lots of different middle grade um, books. The Midwife's, Midwife's Apprentice, Matilda Bone, um, The Ballad of Lucy Whipple, Alchemy, and Maggie Swan. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I thought it was interesting. Uh, and just she wanted to write the introduction based on um, how kids interpret the read, not so much how her writing the introduction on it, like how did I interpret it, more or less how did pe like kids interpret it and, and of that time. So anywho, 
I thought that was interesting. But let's get, get on into it. Um, first things first, we always rate our books first so we don't forget. What was your rating of, of the read? Um, I gave it a four. I really liked it. Um, I like that it's old fashioned. I read a lot of books from that, I think that time period, 50s and 60s, when I was a kid in the 80s, just because that was a lot of what was on the shelf. All the new stuff was pretty much checked out right away. So it's, it's a familiar style of writing and verbiage and things, if that makes sense. The language is very familiar to me. Um, so I just sank right into it and really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad that it's not as dark as I thought it was going to be. I always felt like it was going to be kind of a scary book um, when I was little, especially, and I was intrigued by it, but <laughs> I never quite got the guts to read it then. So I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. It's not perfect. No book really is perfect, but I, I did enjoy it. And I liked how all the characters grew and changed and, you know, yeah, I had a good time. Four stars. what do you think? I don't know. I, I feel like I should wait until after we've all discussed it before I give my final rating because like right now I'm like at a 2.5. Mm -hmm. I, there were so many qualities that I appreciated and that I enjoyed. And I promise I am not sitting in the dark, everyone. There are like so many lights on. I don't know why it always looks like I'm sitting in the dark. I am not, I promise. Um, but anywho, sorry, I get sidetracked. Uh, there were so many good qualities and so many things that I did like. But as far as like just overall enjoyment, I think if I were just to have been reading this without being re like reading it for a book club, I would have just DNF'd it. Like I just would have been like, ah, I'm not really into this book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad I read it because obviously it has substance and it won a, an award, which is, is, you know, something that obviously there's something there. But I don't know, like right now, I'm just like, it's like, it, nah, it, was, it was okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. There's just something that is not clicking with me mm -hmm. with the book. But like I said, maybe after we discuss it, I will feel more compelled to give it a higher score. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not that I'm like, I'm not used to reading this time era. It's not that, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've read books during this time um johnny tremaine is probably the closest to this time era um because that's during the revolution um which this is leading up to essentially uh but i don't know maybe this time era just isn't my favorite or something like yeah. that maybe it's just it's like too too little is happening mm -hmm. without i don't know yeah so i'm at a 2.5 right now but who, who knows maybe by the end of this discussion it'll be higher Maybe lower. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, it looks like Annie got a 3.5, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty good. Decent. Yeah. On Goodreads, I list it as a three. I don't I don't go down um, when I have a half score. Um, but yeah. Okay. Okay. So overall thoughts on the book. Anything that stuck out to you? Anything that um, was notable? Of the of the book, what what were your thoughts? Um, I, like I said before, it wasn't as scary as I thought. I really thought there would be a really big focus on like a witch trial, for lack of a better word, you know, or term, um, and that kind of freaked me out a little bit, you know. Reading like and mentally, I just sort of became a kid again reading it, um, and I was really nervous. Like, dang, I don't want to read about a trial and like having Scarlet Letter flashbacks and stuff. Like, I didn't want that to happen, you know, as a kid's book. So I was really surprised pleasantly that it was just this little part near the end where she was accused. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And I didn't know anything about this book, really, other than that was classic. But I didn't know that Kit was from Barbados. So it was kind of nice to hear her talk about home and what it was like there and not just how it was and the 1600s in colonial America. So that was a nice refresher that I didn't see coming at all. Um, I don't know, I liked her. I liked how, every, like I said before, how everybody kind of shifted and grew a little bit, um, especially Kit coming from 
a place of privilege, not really realizing it necessarily and realizing what hard work is like and um, how different people can think, you know, and yeah, I just, I, I'm flipping through it again. I, I just liked all the characters individually and I don't know, I had a good time. It's not a great <laughs> conversation, place, but I, I really, I just enjoyed it. Yeah. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the best part of the whole read is the character arc of Kit. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, you see her coming over as this completely privileged, um, high society, you mm -hmm. know, I had served, like, I had slaves and servants and all this stuff, seven trunks, and, yeah. you know, meets her Puritan uh, family and just seeing that arc, um, and, and not really a self-destructive one, just a really nice progressive, you know, no big, like huge climaxes of like, you know, they burned her clothes or anything. It just was a really nice, you know, um, authentic, genuine way of coming to one's own, like a coming of age story. Mm -hmm. um, so of a lot of books that I've read on um, this kind of, idea it was it was really nice to see it so authentically played out like it wasn't dramatic it wasn't you know unrealistic it just really made sense on how mm. that that came to be um and i think that's one thing i can appreciate about this book that being said as being a piece of it i felt like that's really why this book won an award, became a classic, all that kind of thing, because this book is one of the few books, I think, that you can have a child in that middle grade reading zone to read. And there are so many things to learn from. Mm -hmm. There's being true to yourself. There's asking questions, there's helping others, standing up for others, um, uh, not, you know, really believing all, per like, there's a perception, and then there's really what it is, you know, and, and really getting into the, the meat of things and staying true to oneself. I really, I really enjoyed the fact that there were so many pieces that, because when I was, when I was reading it, I was thinking like, okay, so if I'm a kid, like, what do I think about this? And there's just so many opportunities for like, if you're reading this in a class that a teacher could be like, so what would you do in this situation? Or how do you feel about, you know, what she did in the situation or what the uh, adults did in this situation? So I felt like it was really a great um, device almost without being like so overt and, and like slamming it in your face. Right. It was just really it was a lesson. authentic. Yeah. yeah, it was just really authentic. And so I, I liked that about it. Um, but as an adult reading, I'm just kind of like, this is like really preachy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just like very, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Um, a few things that I, I thought were kind of, funny like why was that emphasized so much was when she was coming over she kept talking about how beautiful aunt rachel is and she is so beautiful and she's beautiful and beautiful 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 and then she gets there and she's like she's got gray hair and is solemn and like mm -hmm. so she was beautiful and now because she is a puritan she's ugly <laughs> like, mm -hmm. i thought that was so awful i was like <laughs> So she's a Puritan now and she has to do hard work so she can't be beautiful. Mm -hmm. She just can't be beautiful. Nothing. And oh. nowhere in time like did she by the end like oh I now now that I've gotten to know her I can really see her true beauty. Nope. Never took that. Never was. It was just like nope. She I thought she did say now. that at once. At point did she? she did. Yeah. I don't know. It was just briefly said like I you know I see her attractiveness and something else now. It was shortly after she talked about Matthew, like how she could see how I remember that. I remember right. how she was like, I it was just I after could that. see how Rachel would follow him because yeah. he's so you know, like he's just 
you know, takes charge and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, whoa, slow down. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is, like, as a young reader, like, you really kind of need a history lesson mm-hmm. to understand this book. Because you have the Puritans and then the Quakers and what the problem is there. Mm-hmm. And unless you know what that is historically, you, you understand that they don't like each other. But realistically, you don't understand why by reading this book. This mm-hmm. book doesn't really explain it which it's not it shouldn't have to right because i think it's like something you're supposed to have known so it's almost like is this book meant to be read in that history class you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like where it it makes the most sense where it can align with the history lesson and then here's a a fictional portrayal Mm -hmm. as well as the amount of times that uh kit brings up you know, the allegiance to the king and, well, why are you guys, you know, and and they're obviously trying to create, you know, the the colonies are trying to become their own free states, essentially, Um, which is obviously in history, we know is leading up to the um, revolution. But I, I feel like if you didn't know what was happening, like you'd get through the book, okay, and you'd still get the the lessons that are there. But a lot of that other stuff, I think, I feel like would go over your head. Yes and no, because I'm thinking about, like, my mom. She's a member of the Silent Generation. So she, when this came out brand new, she, she would have been a teenager. But she's talked about her schooling before, what that was like. And a lot of it was this time period, Revolutionary War, um, Westward Expansion, all that stuff. That's a lot of what they talked about that she remembers from grade school specifically. Um, so if this is for kids who are like fifth, sixth grade, maybe, you know, like upper grade school levels, this would be like spot on. They would have had a working knowledge of a lot of this stuff already. So it would be built in. Right. That's so, what I'm saying. Like you, yeah. they'd have to read this book like parallel with having learned this information. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so like when you wouldn't be able to pick it up without knowing about right. all that. I'm sure it's less this way now because it's you know lots of decades later. But I know that's how that's when it was written. That's what a lot of schooling was like. That was yeah. big. So yeah, but yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, so g- running back to the comments real quick here, yeah. uh, Jenna gave it a four, mm-hmm. but doesn't know if that's really a four because. You haven't been reading anything good lately. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you enjoyed it. It's okay to get yeah. it. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, let's see. Also thought the characters were flawed, but that made them fairly realistic. Um, kids issue with Rachel's beauty is showing yeah. kids high class flaw looking down on manual labor. Yeah, definitely. Could be. Um, it was definitely very interesting, too, how later, bringing up the manual labor part, so she does all this work, but when everyone gets sick, when the other girls get sick and she takes over, that's the point where Matthew's like, okay, you're a real person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yay, good for you. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, it took that long. I think I feel like she's been doing a lot of work this whole time. Right. But when she, like, is the only one that can do it and she mm-hmm. stands, she's, you know, she, you know, she steps up and does it. Because mm-hmm. um, obviously at the, by this point, she really truly cares about mm-hmm. these um, family members. Uh, that that's when he finally sees that she's really part of the family and and whatnot. And we all know that he has a soft spot soft spot for mercy so the fact Mm -hmm. that you know she's really caring for mercy and onion peels on the chest what like i know i'm trying to like i was trying to figure that out like what i'm like it's not like it's vix like right onion peels sauteed like onion like i just think caramelized onions is what i kept thinking of like that's that's what it that's what i was thinking like what (laughs) i know and warm Mm mm-hmm yeah, I'm thinking like this. Is it this? this I I was like, ah, oh, that's lost on me. I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's move on to our next question. Um, and we kind of been talking about this, but like, what makes this middle grade, and how does this impact readers regardless of age? Mm-hmm. Um, this, I mean, we've kind of already tossed this about a a bunch, but let's let's 
get to the core of the fact that it's a middle grade book. So middle grade meaning um, it's not quite early reader. It's not young adult. It's right in the middle um, where we have those, I would say like third to like sixth graders, mm -hmm. um, almost seventh. But once you get into seventh and eighth grade, they're kind of like inching into the young adults. Yeah. Um, but it's usually a lot of coming of age stories, um, a lot of fun, exciting stories, um, nothing with a lot of romantic stuff. I mean, there were romantic things in here, but it wasn't like, you know, totally into it um, and nothing too saucy, um, which a lot of young adult is very, very saucy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what makes it young, uh, middle, middle grade. That's kind of what that's all about. And this book in particular um, is middle grade, just I think with the messaging, um, mm -hmm. with the idea of um, helping readers understand the, the topics, the, you know, um, the being humble, um, protecting oneself, protecting others, all of that. That's very middle grade-esque as far as the lessons that you're trying to portray to those, those readers. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like impacting readers, regardless of age, um, that really refers back to like, there's so many people that read middle grade, um, especially now. Um, we have booktubers that uh, specialize in middle grade and they're not even close to middle grade age, which is perfectly fine because all books are books. And no matter how old you are, I think it's perfectly fine to read them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as a reader, like, so for myself, okay, so uh, almost 40 year old woman reading this book, um, it makes me think as a mother, like, are these kind of things that I want my kids to read about? Um, is this a book that I want to keep in my repertoire? Because I think it did an excellent job of that. I think it did an excellent job of having the care, the, especially the main character come from a certain background where they had certain ideals and certain um, expectations of what the world was supposed to look like and what it was supposed to look like to them and for them and gets tossed into a completely different uh, world and how they survived in that um, without really losing themselves. And I think it did a really good job of that. I think it was, I think it was well written in that sense. Um, like I said, my favorite part of the entire book was that character arc. I think it just it did a really good job. Yeah. I th the thing that makes it middle grade for me is like almost all middle grade books I have read. There's always some portion of it that is like, okay, you think, you know, what your life is like, because kids are really insular. It's all about them all the time. Like that's their whole world is themselves. And sometimes their parents or family, but like, it's just them in their head. And they're starting to be more aware then, like of the bigger picture that there are other families, other ways of doing things. So you're going on sleepovers for the first time when you're like, probably late. Those little things. So you see like different kinds of toothpaste you didn't know were out there. Like all those little things that blow your mind when you're that age. And that comes up to here, like you were saying, I mean, Kit's coming from a totally different part of the world where everything is different and she assumes things will be similar enough and she hears about how thing how her family used to be how Rachel used to be and she gets there and it's so not so it's a really good way for kids to understand on so many deep levels not just surface stuff world the world is a big place and there's a lot of differences in there and you can sort of choose your own way to do things to a certain extent you know, like, yes, your parents are still in charge. Your family's still your family. You have to go along with what the adults say because you're a kid still. But you can still think for yourself and notice and maybe figure out why people think the way they think, that if they're different than you. So it, it lets you start to question things a little bit more and not just like, well, that's weird and bad, but like, huh, what's this? You know? Mm -hmm. So many middle grades have that kind of. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's not just about you and look at all this other stuff that's out there. So yeah, yeah I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Cause I mean, technically the age of the protagonist and really the others involved are all young adult age. Mm -hmm. They're all what you would assume would be in a young adult mm -hmm. uh, book, but the topics, the, you know, yeah. the true essence of the book is very middle grade. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So yeah. Yeah. Um, Jenna just mentioned the onion peel thing uh, is an old timey myth to cure yeah. ailments. It reminds me of something that Appalachian grandma would do. <laughs> well, clearly it worked in this book. So, yeah. oops. Um, I just like to, when she speaking of like how she like got it too, like Kit got it, but because she was out in the sunshine in Barbados right. and ate all the fruits and whatever, she's mm -hmm. just, it only like a day or so she had a little cough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, are you trying to tell us something? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you get in the sunshine and eat all your vegetables and fruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was funny. There were a few, there were a few parts where I kind of chuckled because I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what are you trying to say there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, let's move right on along uh, to our next question, which is, uh, here we go. How do Kit and her new family members influence one another for better or worse? I mean, it's, uh, I think Math, is that his name is Matthew? I'm like, yeah. I'm blanking on names. Yep. Like, I, I was really worried he would be one of those uh, stereotypically strict puritans you know and i was like gosh she's gonna be a witch immediately because she's bought all these fine clothes all the trunks blah 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 um and he does seem so severe but then i think of him too this girl this teenage girl just plopped on your doorstep who is not really your family and she's got all this junk with her and she seems to only care about how things look and oh my god you know like what am i going to do with this like another mouth to feed blah 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 um so i liked that he came around, like you said, it seemed to took him like the whole entire freaking book to be like, give her an inch, you know, even though she's trying and doing stuff and she's working for her first time ever, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I, I think it was gentle and really natural how they evolved each other. And um, especially little kids in town, I liked how she was trying to really bring them out of their shells more. And as, I remember it's something about like, they seem like there's miniature adults in their suits and everything so strict tied together. I mean, that is not any kid I know now. And I know at times are very different clearly, but I was like, yeah, I can't see any kid sitting still like daily in a suit and being chill with that, you know, the rip stuff off, you know, I mean, it would not go well, but um, yeah, I, it just seemed like a really natural evolution and the people she was around the most, that was the fastest to change and the easiest to change. It seemed like, especially Mercy, because the two of them were together. It seems like almost all the time. Judith was there, but I don't know. Also, I don't know. She just seemed like more of a teenager, you mm -hmm. know, the whole time. But I, I really liked the influence that they had on each other. And especially at the end in the um, courtroom when Matthew was like, now hang on a second a couple of times. And he really, really stood up with her when I wasn't sure that he would, even though he begrudgingly like to himself or to the family was like, yeah, she's not terrible, mm -hmm. but yeah, I really enjoyed the slow burn of most of it. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think you're right. You know, with Matthew, you know, mm -hmm. he's this really strict, you know, Puritan, hardworking, wants everything by the book. But I, I feel like he, he was also very reasonable. Like he yeah. wasn't, going to just take something at face value like when when they were all like giving their evidence which yeah. was like oh my cow stopped having milk one day mm -hmm. how is that evidence how is that evidence like, I saw her looking at the window yeah she <laughs> so. looked at my window and I couldn't sew the jacket on right yeah. like <laughs> what so Sounds like a you problem <laughs> he hears all this and instead of being like yes which he was like mm -hmm. come on now because yeah. he's reasonable. He's not, mm -hmm. you know, he's going to listen. He isn't, you know, just shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like he was always that way, but he's a selectman. He, he has to hold a certain decorum. And to do that, you know, you, you are very strict and you are really set in your ways. Um, and especially with, on top of that, trying to hold the colony you know, mm -hmm. that I think I was more interested in that. And there wasn't really a lot of that in the book. There was only mm -hmm. so many hints. And I felt like, ooh, this is going to get interesting. And then I'm like, oh, 
and then I like, pulled it back a little bit. And then like they do something else. I'm like, oh, this is getting interesting. And then, I, then they pull it back a little bit. So it was just hinting at it, mm -hmm. um, which was a little sad. But um, I think it was nice to see like it almost feels like with Kit coming, it I, I'm, I don't want to say save to the family because I don't feel like anything bad would have happened to them if she hadn't come they would just continue living the way they were living yeah um which is not necessarily a bad thing um but i feel like with her coming she really put a new breath in them mm -hmm. um and took out a little bit of complacency yeah. so they were like because i think judith would have always ended up with william there was just a little bit of a, a little a kink in the in the chain that happened when Kit arrived because it was like, right. ooh, something new and fancy. Like, mm -hmm. I'll build my house for her. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> so I feel like it always was going to be Judith and William. I mean, mm -hmm. she she's, like you said, very much a teenager. Like, ooh, shiny things. Oh, right. this, all oh, that. And the whole time she was like all about John. And then when that whole misunderstanding, when he came to try to oh ask for mercy, I was like, oh my gosh, if that they made me so married, sick. like, this is like, not going to be good. I know. Don't do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I knew John wasn't going to speak up because I, he's right. so meek and mild. And how, mm -hmm. how do you even do that? And so, yeah. So I just feel like Kit really gave them the inspiration to just take it up a notch, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, to not feel like they're stuck in right. their current station. And not everyone's station changed. I mean, Rachel was the same the, the day that she showed up to the mm -hmm. end of the book. She was always kind, committed, mm -hmm. um, loving. Helpful. Uh, what's that? Helpful, trying to teach yeah. her to do stuff and everything. Yeah. And just rolled with it as much as she could yep and she the very first instance we even see her she goes to uh hannah's to give her food and clean mm -hmm. and whatever else she was doing so i thought it was weird that that was never brought up again like all of a sudden she stopped when kit arrived like i didn't understand that i thought that was a mm -hmm. little like i don't know I, I feel like that was a missed opportunity um because I, I, I thought that was weird. And then she just gives like an apple tart later on. Like, but what happened to like bringing an entire meal and like staying? Yeah. It was, I thought that was weird. Um, but like I said, she stayed the same throughout the whole book. So she, uh, she was always that kind hearted um, aunt that we saw. Matthew, I feel like the same really stayed true to himself. Um, but he did, he did warm up a bit mm -hmm. uh, for Kit because we knew he was warm towards Mercy. Um, right. But I feel like with Kit, he really warmed up to uh, her in particular. Judith was the same the whole time. She never mm -hmm. changed. Right. She never changed. She was the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Yeah. But And then, obviously, Kit uh, came in very privileged and by the end was very humbled um, and had built such great bonds with not only her family, but a lot of people um, outside of her family, like mm -hmm. Hannah and Prudence um, and Matt. And uh, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of stuff there. And I don't know that it was just any one person that helped her kind of come to that point. I think it was a collective, you know, it takes a village mm -hmm. um, and it really did. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, let's see here. Matthew's care for kids to hate him in the adult mm -hmm. sense. But... Yeah. Till he stands up and then kids can probably be like, good, yay. Mm -hmm. It's about time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was worried that he would burn all her dresses too and make her give them oh away. Oh my gosh. I was like, I, really <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> something's going to happen. I know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. So love marriage and happy ending. So what are your thoughts about the book's pairings and does everyone get a happy ending? So we yeah, have three relieved. girls, <laughs> we have three girls and three boys. Mm -hmm. 
So we have Mercy, who is the oldest, Judith, who is the uh, youngest, and then Kit, who is the cousin, basically. And then we have John, who is uh, training, basically, to be a clergyman. And William, who is, like, the town most eligible bachelor, like I guess. Doc, sort of, I don't know. Like, yeah, the popular <laughs> kid. Yeah. And <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Yeah, who is the sailor, mm -hmm. uh, captain's boy. And I mean, it's obvious who belongs with who from the get-go, uh, but it all doesn't come to fruition until the last chapter. Mm -hmm. And some signals get crossed, and there's a little bit of weird pairing uh, mm -hmm. in there. But what did we? what are our thoughts on how all that kind of went down? Yeah, I just totally relieved, honest to God. When Jonathan was like, well, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, sure, Judith, all right. I was like, no, please, <laughs> this is so bad. And I was so happy when Kit saw Mercy looking at him and was like, oh, oh, she loves him. I was like, oh, thank mm -hmm. God, somebody is noticing Mercy and paying attention to her and not just in a what can you do for me kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I was delighted with how everything turned out. Like you said, all in the last chapter, but that everyone kind of got it together and figured out, like, yeah. I should really be with, you know, them. And I really appreciated, especially the conversation that Kit had with William about, like, walks into the door and says, like, oh, this, I guess this is not going to work. You know, no, I don't think so either. And they just had a very, like, calm, rational, very adult conversation mm -hmm. for a couple of, what, 15-year-olds? I don't know how old they are, but, you know, teenagers. I really, really appreciated that. Like, especially, I was very happy. But yeah. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that she realized that Nat was who she really liked and that she realized too, that just going home to Barbados wouldn't fix everything. It wouldn't make her life magically better again. Like she's still is a, she's a changed person. She could not be changed by this essentially year she was with her family and um, the life that she and Nat could have seems ideal for her really because she can visit if she wants to in Barbados and she can stay there if she, I mean, the world is her oyster. So I was very happy that everyone got together at the end <laughs> mm -hmm. and was with really the right person. And it wasn't going to be like, oh, God, bad th like thoughts about what a marriage would be like. Or Mercy would be stuck home with her parents for the, her love long days. And yeah, so I, yeah, I was really relieved. Yeah. I feel like, too, like for a character like Mercy, who throughout the whole book is just this like pure little angel in the corner mm -hmm. that is the invalid. Mm -hmm. I hate when books have an invalid yeah. because it's like they never do anything about it. Like mm -hmm. it makes me so angry because I get it. Like there are so many children um, that had some kind of ailment that was uncurable because of the time frame. Like there's mm -hmm. just medicine. There's no nothing. They, right. they were bleeding people right. for, for ugh, Christmas sake. And so, I rolled my eyes. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Every time. People. And when he's like, I don't think I should bleed her anymore. I'm like, no, no, Good. you shouldn't. <laughs> you should stop. <laughs> and stop feeding them toads or whatever they were saying. <laughs> so like gross. who's, who's the witch now? Like, right. are you serious? <laughs> like, Oats. Yeah. So it just it it angers me because I'm just like, oh, there's always this one character that just gets like shit on the entire mm -hmm. book and they get nothing at the end. So mm -hmm. I was happy that there was like some kind of happy ending for them. Um, because she's so deserving. Yeah. Um, but the whole time too, I kept thinking about Secret Garden and I was like, just take her outside. <laughs> like it's let her around. Let her go outside. <laughs> Maybe it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like she just stuck inside. Just yep. no one takes her anywhere. She can't even go to the meetings. Mm -hmm. Um uh, so I was happy that there was someone who like was of pure intent. Yeah. Um and for a while I thought it was he was gonna be really interested in Kit, so I was really pleased. Mm -hmm. that there was no like love triangle or anything yeah. like that. It was just, he was interested in mercy and I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to not like Judith uh, just because she yeah. was kind of like too much for me in the beginning. But I realized 
in reading her, she's like, just being herself, just whatever. And she never did anything that um, would call for you to not like her. Like she didn't like, right. You know, Nothing was horrible. Any that. Clothes or steal. I mean, you know, she just was being herself. Um, and the whole time I'm just like, why did she get up, give up on William? So much? like, why is she interested in John? Like, why would she want to be a clergyman's wife? Like that, that's like the, a poor station essentially. Right. right? And so I was like, why is she, she needs to get back with William. And I love how building a house is what is showing your intention. Yeah. Like, I she was so, Judith was so into the, the building of the house, all the details. They talk about it several yes. times. Like, yes. could there be a more clear sign that they're supposed to be together? Yes. And William, I mean, doy. I mean. Yeah. He clearly Judith. has no yeah. mind of his own. So he needs a wife who has a mind and just like, blah, 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 blah. No. Enter <laughs> Judith. Yeah. Yeah. Enter <laughs> Judith. Exactly. Um, and okay. So here's something. It's kind of off topic, but kind of in the same. What the heck was the corn husking thing about? I was so confused. Mm -hmm. So she gets the red corn mm -hmm. and ha ha ha, I don't need this anymore. And then throws it to William. I think I'm whoever so finds the red corn um, is the first per next person to find love or find marriage or something like that. Okay. If they have it already. Then they can like, toss it to someone i think i always think of like the bouquet and yeah all the single ladies mortifying yeah chuck the bouquet it's sort of thing like you chuck the corn <laughs> you chuck the corn at whoever and then whoever they catch is it the next person to find love yeah hmm. times be simpler then i guess mm -hmm. um so then with the whole kit and william thing too like i love how it really like he, she never really said that she was interested. Right. She just kept showing up. Right. And it was just implied, I guess. Which, you know, yeah. shame on her for not saying, like, eh, I just got here. Can right. I just, like, understand <laughs> what y'all's business is before mm -hmm. you start courting me mm -hmm. and building this house that's supposed to be for me? And I right. get that, like, her immediate reaction was, like, okay, I can get away from these gray people mm -hmm. um but it just felt so weird yeah like literally she's there for a week and he starts courting her courting her yeah. and everyone's fine with it mm -hmm. and he's 19 she's 16 i get it time era whatever but i was like mm -hmm. what uh but i loved when we start to see Nat more, because I've never heard of this big book before. I, this is the first mm -hmm. time I ever heard of it. I didn't know what to expect. Like you said earlier, I thought it was going to be more on the witch trial side. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be more about witches. Um, I was actually hoping a little bit that it was real witchcraft, but we didn't yeah. see it. Anymore. I get it, whatever. Um, but so when he came back into the picture and was like on the Hannah side, I was like, oh, I really like this guy. Oh, so this is going to be the love interest. This is going to be her pairing. Um, and I think, you know, they have a connection immediately when they're on the dolphin at right. first before she even lands in Connecticut. Um there's a connection. He's obviously doing the whole middle grade, like punch you and ha ha. That means I like you mm -hmm. um, because he's making fun of her and all this other stuff. And that's, you know, the clear sign that someone likes you. Mm -hmm. um, but then when he starts to be more involved where he's coming more often and he's like asking her more about what's going on, he's clearly perturbed by the fact that she's kind of betrothed almost um to the sky and the jack-o-lantern situation that was a clear sign that he had a problem yeah. with that guy which yeah you know which i, I laughed so hard i was like me too i laughed really hard it was like, that oh, is blasphemy really yeah <laughs> all right okay yeah. <laughs> oh shit sorry my show just started okay um <laughs> So, yeah, I, I thought it was funny. But <sighs> typically, and my friend Bethy Ann would probably scoff at this because she, she knows me well. Usually, I'm one of those people that I'm like, I love happy endings. Everything tied up in a pretty little bow. Oh, 
Love it. Now that I'm old and cynical, I kind of want like half of the happy ending to the people that I really like and like not so much happy ending for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So there is a small piece of me that is like, I really wasn't expecting this to have such happy endings at the end. So it's kind of sad that there was like everything had a happy ending. Like, so Hannah got out and is living with grandma somewhere, mm -hmm. all happy with her kitty cat. Yep. And Kit and Nat and John and Mercy and William and Judith and no one died and mm -hmm. Prince now gets to go to school and you know like it's just kind of like oh Prudence's mom shuts up for once like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh my god what uh see you next Tuesday I know like I know. I, what the heck is going on this woman I did not understand that I was like listen lady mm -hmm. why are you so adamant about making your daughter just worthless right and then uh, i was so happy when the dad was like wait what she can yeah. read she can yeah. write mm -hmm. i can't read and write if i had had a son i would mm -hmm. have let him read and write but she can do it mm -hmm. now i'm impressed like mm -hmm. it was very weird mm -hmm. i didn't understand that i didn't understand why she would want her daughter to just you know yeah i thought that was weird but, um, but, yeah, so, I mean, everyone had a happy ending. It was all happy, happy. Happy-go-lucky. Except for the fact that we really don't know what happens with, like, the political part of it all. Like, did, yeah. like, that, that, I was like, that was what I wanted to know about. Like, <laughs> oh, where did the thing go? Like, yeah, who took it? So, the room got really foggy. <laughs> <laughs> and this parchment paper, which we mm -hmm. know is not... Uh, silent when you move it, right? Just disappears. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, it's safe. And nobody called witch hunt on that, Come right? On. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Speaking of witch hunt, let's talk about witchcraft. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your impression of Hannah, her sanctuary, and her relationships? I thought that little house of her sounded really cozy and nice. Like, like I would live on the edge of a forest and a meadow with my pet of choice and like a little room to hold my own. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> Wouldn't be thrilled about the flooding every three years, but you know, um, yeah, I feel bad. I mean, I just, that she was branded and everyone treated her so terribly, but she was just this wonderful, nice lady, just chilling, doing her own thing. Not Poor old lady. Anybody. That's I what I wrote down. Poor old lady. <laughs> I know. What a tough life, but you know, to keep it together and, be so grateful and kind to everyone who shows up at our doorstep and welcoming. And yeah, yeah. that's why I thought was really interesting. Cause a lot of times when you read books where there's like this, like old lady in the woods, they're right. like really cranky when you first meet them. And then you mm -hmm. get to know they're like super nice, but like at right. first impression, they're like, what are you doing? I'm right. going to eat you Hansel and Gretel. Like mm -hmm. they're just like mean old lady. But she's, like, super welcoming. Doesn't matter. Just, like, oh, hi. Oh, you found the meadows. Like, oh, that's kind of creepy. But okay. Have like, a pancake. <laughs> yeah, have a pancake. Have a okay. blueberry cake or whatever. Yeah. Have this, have that. So Aunt mm -hmm. Rachel thinks this woman doesn't have any food and is mm -hmm. sending her all this food. Yet anytime anybody comes, there is a yeah. blueberry cake. That's right. You don't call that witchcraft. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked her. Yeah, she just had a safe haven, you know, all is welcome. Um, I was really nervous about that prudence. I was like, she's going to rat these people out. That's how this is going to go down. This is, She's going to claim that they're all witches, blah, blah, blah. And when she came to be, like, the witness to save it all, I was like, you go, girl. Um, cause at first, you think she's just, like, this little punk kid that you know throws her doll off the side of the boat and right. turns out she's just you know trying to protect herself and i thought that was really nice mm -hmm. um so yeah i love to like the original like the thing that they witnessed that claims that she's a witch is they saw the cat running out of the house with a mouse in its mouth right. that mouse was hannah <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, really okay sure so yeah, I'm so happy that I did not grow up during that time because, I, I mean, anybody could have been a witch. Well, <laughs> sorry. Any woman could have yeah. been a witch. Mm -hmm. Like, anybody. Like, 
you know you you learned how to read in two days <gasps> you're a witch right you know, like you look at someone the wrong way or you have resting bitch face i have resting yeah. bitch face naturally i would have been a witch like i would have been a witch died 20 years ago oh uh, i would have been i would have been burned at the stake i know absolutely Me twice too. yeah so okay yeah. i know definitely mm -hmm. definitely did and if I was in any like uh, outlander situation, dead. <laughs> the immediately, I wouldn't remember her. I wouldn't remember historical facts. I would forget which side I'm supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. I'd be dead. And I and I mentioned something like, "Oh my god, give me your give me your number," and they'd be like, "What? <laughs> oh, yeah. never mind." I've literally had moments. Trust. This is kind of getting off on a tangent mm -hmm. here. I've had moments where I think to myself. I should really relearn history just in case. Like literally that goes through my head. Like, no, I know because I need to know these things mm -hmm. because if I ever get stuck in a, like a time warp vortex, something or other, and I get sh shucked back in time, I need to remember where right. and when I am. So I can be like, okay, stay away from this guy. Go to this guy. Who's the mm -hmm. president. I need mm -hmm. to know these things. Mm hmm. So, and all, I mean, it happens as you just age, but like, I used to know the stuff. I loved history when I was a little kid mm -hmm. and like in school and stuff. I loved history classes. Aside from English, it was my favorite class. Mm -hmm. I always loved it. It was always interesting. I used to know really basic facts and now things sound familiar. Yep. Everything is really blurry. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think I know the century for some things. Yep. Otherwise, yep. I know that name. Not sure how. I mean, it just, yep. it just happens. So I do think I need to refresh my drink on history things for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho. Okay. So moving forward, I don't think I missed any comments. No. Um, that was the last real question. We're almost to the hour mark, which mm -hmm. is perfect timing. Um, but any additional uh, thoughts that we didn't discuss? Anything that we wanted to... Um, bring up about the read I kind of mentioned all the things I had the only other mm -hmm. one and this is obviously just because of the date of the the publication but some of the language I felt was a little too advanced for middle readers middle grade mm -hmm. readers um there's even some that I looked up for a definition I was like what does oh. sun dry mean like why I keep saying what's sun dry and it just means like various and I was like oh yeah I just say that <laughs> Sundry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, to me, as a middle grade, it's sun dry. I know. I know. Sun dry. <laughs> sun dry. I know. Yeah. So. No, I, I'm surprised how much I like this. I'm surprised how this is sort of held, like, held up and it wasn't, didn't fall into those big tropes of like Matthew stays the nasty person and like everything gets burnt, like no big dramatic anything. I really liked that. Um, yeah, I, I'm really surprised by this. So. Very glad you have read it. Glad it was yeah. good. Yeah, I'm glad I finished it. I'm mm -hmm. glad that I stuck true to it. Um, I think now after discussing it, I'll probably just say three. Mm -hmm. Bring it up from a 2.5. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say I loved it. But right. I liked it. Mm -hmm. I liked it. It had a lot of attributes that I feel like are really good for that middle grade audience. Um, so in like 10 or 12 years, if your kids would read it in school, would you read it again with them? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I think it, I think it would be a great pairing with the history lesson and then yeah. a fictional. I, I like when you, when, uh, when school did that, where you would have like, you would learn it, but then you would have like this fic fictional aspect. So you can kind of mm -hmm. like have more of a, a um, like what if kind of experience. Yeah. It really helps so. stuff stick in your head, I think, too. Absolutely. You know, all these different perspectives of the same exact event, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to like when I was a middle grade reader. Um, cause, I mean, back when we were kids, I mean, I'm not that much younger than you. But so when we were kids, a lot of these things weren't really that big of genres. So like middle grade right. was these kind of books more um i always liked the ones that like were historical based mm -hmm. 
so I liked those kind of books because you were learning about it in school and then you would find this book and it would be about a person that you could like relate to and then understand more about that. So, right. um, you know, it wasn't, and wasn't a genre when we were kids, really. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. Until Just, Twilight came out. I mean, it really wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like much. Pretty much middle grade. And then, I guess teenager books, they were probably always there, you know, like, well, like Sweet Valley High and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that kind of came up in the like, late 80s and 90s. So that was more popular then. And then it, it led into YA. But it really was just that, like, this is a library book for me. And here, like that J, which mm -hmm. might get a thing. That's junior. That's, you know, middle grade books. The, everything was that. Mm -hmm. It was like little kids picture books and then this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I really miss going in the libraries and just browsing and not knowing necessarily an author, like what they're about, where they're from, um, you know, like what the book was about, whatever. I just browsing and being like, this looks interesting. I'll check it out and try it. Like just total going in blank. And I'm happy I know a lot about books and authors now, but I miss like the general browse and the surprising discoveries that you'd make, you know? I feel like it's easier to do that though in the middle grade and young adult section than it is to do it in the adult section because the adult section is like four times the size. Mm -hmm. And like, so at my library, like if you look at the like middle grade kids section, it's, like the mystery section of the adults book is the same size as the children's mm -hmm. section. So like to even just browse in the adult books, it you can't because there's just like, unless you go like, I'm going to take one book from the mystery section. I'll take mm -hmm. one book from the romance section. I'm going to take one book from the classics, you know, like it's hard to browse because there's mm -hmm. just too much. Whereas in the children's and the young adult, it's such a smaller section that you really feel like you're not overwhelmed by browsing because you know that like by browsing in this section, like you can get through a lot of it because it's not as big. Um, because I do, when, when I was helping my stepdaughter, when she was reading in those genres, um, it was so much fun mm -hmm. because I would got to be a kid again. I'm just like, I love this section because you would just, you would go and you would just be like, you'd kind of look at the binding and you like, look like what binding is like calling to me. Mm -hmm. And for me as a reader, I was always like this. I always looked for books that were part of series. Mm -hmm. So when I found a big chunk of books that was like all one author, I'd be like, okay, let's look at this one. Um, I very rarely read standalones. Um, so it was so much fun helping her find new books and series and whatnot. So, but it's hard to do that in the adult section because there's just way too much to go through, like mm -hmm. way too much. Um, so it's not fun. So that's when you have to know your authors and know what books you want to look for and know, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the browsing in, in the children's section and even the young adult is, is always a lot of fun. And their covers are so much better. Mm -hmm. They're a lot brighter and yeah, more dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's always some kind of Easter egg. Um, yep. On their covers, which is fun too. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, hello. We're just about to finish Hi. here. Nice to see you. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything else uh, that I wanted to discuss. Um, yeah. It was good. It was good. Yeah, I'm just glad people I'm glad like we read it. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. So just to remind everyone for next month, um, again, that is going to be a nonfiction, nonfiction read. Um, mm -hmm. And it's called Upstairs and Downstairs, My Life and Service as a Lady's Maid by Hilda Newman. And you may see another author title on there, um, Tim Tate. Mm -hmm. um, you may also find this as Diamonds... At dinner. At dinner. I was going to say mm -hmm. diamonds for dinner. I was like, that does not sound right. No. Diamonds at dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's the two titles, but the same title of my life 
and service as a lady's maid is the same. Um, and we'll be starting our reading sprints on Tuesday, April 9th. So not next week, Tuesday, which is the first Tuesday of the month. We're going to, we're going to bring it back one week. Um, so we're going to do that on April 9th at 830, right mm -hmm. after our new product release. Uh, so that'll also be pushed back a week. But, okay. Yep. Well, looks like we're all set there. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, then we'll bid you adieu and we'll see you in two weeks. Hope you all have a great night and uh, reading something great as always. So bye, everyone. Bye.